All right, class. So, um, in this slide, we will review some things and also we will look at the mechanism of reabsorption in the descending and ascending limb of the nephron loop. So, we will start with the figure first. In the figure on your right hand side, you do see the cortex, right? So, this area is the cortex and then all this part is the medulla it is divided into outer medulla and inner medulla don't worry about that i just want you to know that this whole part is the medulla good all right you also see a yellow colored nephron and let's identify the different parts you see the bowman's capsule You see the proximal convoluted tubule, which comes down as the descending limb of the loop of Henle, and then moves back up as the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, and then forms the uh, then forms a coiled portion called the distal convoluted tubule, and ultimately leads to this long tubule called the collecting duct. Right. So these are parts of the nephron. All right, what else do we see here? We also see the glomerulus. We also see this capillary bed, and that is called the glomerulus arising from the or coming out of the glomerulus. We have the efferent arteriole leading to this vasa recta, as you see, and the vasa recta kind of runs parallel to the loop of Henle. Do we agree? They both look like hairpin loops dipping into the medulla. All right. What else is here? We also see all these crazy numbers, right? 100, 200, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200. What does this mean? All right. Now, we will talk about these numbers a little later, but let's move on to the left side of the slide and do some quick review. In our previous uh, videos, we did mention that the process of glomerular filtration take place in the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. By this process, water, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, urea, salt, bicarbonate, uric acid, anything that can come out of the fenestrated capillaries of the glomerulus will be filtered out of the blood and will be dumped into the Bowman space or glomerular space. And this fluid is now called filtrate. Remember larger proteins or plasma proteins and um, red blood cells can, are never ever filtered out of the glomerulus into the filtrate. They always stay in the blood. We talked about this. Now the Bowman's capsule will lead to the proximal convoluted tubule and this is where selective reabsorption take place. Remember, we have filtered out a lot of stuff, a lot of water, a lot of glucose, a lot of amino acids, vitamins, salts, we cannot afford to lose all those, right? So at the proximal convoluted tubule, we have to selectively reabsorb the important stuff that are essential to us. And these things that get selectively reabsorbed back into the, uh, into the capillaries include about 70% water, 100% glucose, amino acid, we also reabsorb some salt, we reabsorb some bicarbonate, we reabsorb some vitamins. So a lot of things actually get reabsorbed back into the proximal convoluted tubule. We also mentioned in our last lecture that the descending limb of the loop of Henle is permeable to water and water only. And how does water come out of the, uh, of the descending limb? By osmosis. The ascending limb of the loop of Henle, on the other hand, does not allow any water to move in and out. It's completely, completely waterproof. 
but it is permeable to salt. There are these salt transporters and sodium potassium pumps that actively, actively with using energy that actively pump out salt into the interstitial space. All right. And we also mentioned that there is a concentration gradient of salt in the medullary interstitium. Rupa, can you show me in the picture where is interstitium? Well, all the space here, this is interstitium or interstitial space, interstitial space. Okay. And there is a gradient. All right. So let's now, we mentioned gradient, right? Now let's look at the numbers. I want you to look into the proximal convoluted tubule and look at the number 300. Remember, remember that osmolality of plasma. What do we mean by osmolality? Osmolality again. Osmolality is the amount of solutes present, right, in plasma. Um, so the osmolality of the filtrate, listen carefully, osmolality of the filtrate in the proximal convoluted tubule is 300 milliosmos that I circled here on top. The osmolality of plasma, let me change color, the osmolality of plasma is also 300 milliosmos. So what do we see here? Osmolality of blood and osmolality of the filtrate in the proximal convoluted tubule is the same. This fluid then comes down the proximal convoluted tubule and it still remains at 300 as you see. Now, the fluid then comes down into the descending limb of the loop of Henle. Do you agree? And obviously the fluid that is coming down has osmolality of 300 milliosmos. But look at the interstitial space that I have labeled in red. As you move down the medulla, do you see? As you move down the medulla, Look at the concentration gradient that exists. The concentration gradient increases. We have 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200. So there is this increasing salt gradient. Increasing salt gradient as we move down the interstitial space along the medulla. Okay. Why? Why do we have this salt gradient in the medulla? Why is medulla salty in the first place? We will answer that in the next slide. But right now, just know, just know that medulla has this salt gradient. Okay, so let's come back to our uh, filtrate that is moving down the, that is moving down the, descending limb so the fluid is 300 right so this is 300 well where does the interstitial space is way too salty a lot of solutes there therefore remember the descending limb is permeable to water so at this point the descending limb will keep losing water out so water out water out haha <laughs> so much difference no 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 Water out, water out, water out, water out. It will keep losing and losing and losing water. And this water goes out by plain osmosis. So water leaves by osmosis. As we lose water from the filtrate, are we concentrating the filtrate? Yes, we are losing water. So at this point, at the very bottom of the loop of Henle, the filtrate is super concentrated and the concentration is about, actually I should erase this. So at this point, at this point, man, I'm sorry. At this point, the filtrate is super concentrated and the filtrate is about 1200 milliosmos at this point which is equal to the um, to the concentration of the interstitial space do you see at the very bottom of the loop 
the concentration of the filtrate is 1200 which is equal to the concentration of the salt in the inter which is equal to the osmotic concentration of the interstitial space all right now as the fluid now the fluid will move back up in the ascending limb do you agree now the fluid now comes back up this way as the fluid comes back up what is happening to the look at the interstitial space so right here it's thousand then there is the gradient goes lower right so it's 800 400 so at this point remember first of all the ascending limb is waterproof it cannot lose water but there are special cells there are special cells lining the thick thicker part of the ascending limb which will pump out like parts of this will pump out salt uh -uh. this will pump out salt into the interstitial space what salt sodium chloride potassium sodium chloride potassium right so it'll pump out these um it'll pump out these salts into the interstitial space all right so this concept is really really important to understand our next part which is called the counter current multiplier system and counter current exchange system we will look at it but i want you to understand one more concept and that is all the salt and all the water that are being dumped into the interstitial space where do they go well do you see the vasa recta the vasa recta will pick up some salt and then will dump out salt and then pick up water and also dump out water so the vasa recta will come into play and the vasa recta has an important role to maintain the interstitial salt gradient again to be discussed little later but hopefully you get the concept here right now I will show you in the next slide I'll show you a hand-drawn picture and we will go real slow and we will explain how this counter current exchange system and how this counter current multiplier system works to maintain the medullary salt gradient all right class